after this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there was a pool called in Hebrew Bethsaida, which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to them, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat, and walk. And at once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was the Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who had been cured, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your mat. But he answered them, The man who made me well said to me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is this man who said this to you? Who said, Take up your mat and walk. Now, the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had disappeared into the crowd that was there. Later, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Do not sin anymore so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and told the Jews all that it was that Jesus did for him that made him well. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. It could have been the feel-good story of the day, the stuff of which movies are made. It had everything that anybody could have asked for. Friendship, sportsmanship, the desire to help another person succeed. Here's what happened. At the Chicagoland Athletic Conference Golf Championship last month, Grant Weibark, a golfer from the University of St. Francis, would advance the NIAI finals by virtue of winning the team championship. He was tied with Seth Duran of Olivet Nazarene after 36 holes for the individual championship, however. Only the winner of the playoff round would advance to the finals. Weibark at first protested. It's stupid, he said, to play the hole if we're both in. However, he also foresaw the danger. He was already going to nationals as part of a team. But if he beat Duran in the playoff, he would also be going as the individual champion, and Duran, who was a senior, would never have the honor of going at all. So, on the first team, Weimark got up and hit his first shot far into the right, into the rough. He would shoot a double bogey while Duran would make par, and like runners who crossed the finish line arm in arm, the two would be going to the finals. When I read the storyline, I thought to myself, what a nice thing to do. If you've got a spot all lined up for yourself, and your winning would eliminate the other guy, why not just let him win and go too? You win, he wins, everybody wins. I thought this with a warm feeling in my heart. Then, on my way to the health club, I turned on two of my favorite morning sports radio guys who had picked the story up and clearly did not see things my way. They were talking as if Weibark 
had hit the Marquis of Queensbury in the head with his shank shot and killed him all over again. The radio discussion could be summed up in what Mike Sulzik wrote on NBCSports.com. Makes you go all gooey inside, doesn't it? The kid's a total sweetheart. The kind of kid you wouldn't mind dating your daughter. Because you know he's got a good heart. But nice doesn't make right. Then Selizek pulls out the dagger. It was a little arrogant. Maybe a lot arrogant of Weimark to do what he did. By yanking the ball off the course, he was suggesting that the only way Duran was going to win is if he messed up. That's a little presumptuous. That was a quick turn. One moment, Weibark would be the kind of guy you would want your child to bring home. And the next, he's the presumptuous whatever. I think the key to the entire problem could be summed up by what Duran's coach said about both men. Sports is not the highest priority to them. That, I think, is what set the sports writers and the radio hosts off. What if sports isn't the number one thing in your life? What if winning isn't everything? What if winning takes second place to helping a friend on a playoff hole? Why, the whole structure would crumble. Nobody would be competitive anymore. People would be giving away games, left and right. Vince Lombardi's winning isn't the only thing. It's everything. Might be replaced by UCLA's equally famous and perhaps more successful basketball coach, John Wooden's. What you are as a person is far more important than what you are as a basketball player. And, as Wooden said, you can't live a perfect day without doing something for someone who will never be able to repay you. What if that kind of stuff caught on? What would it do to sports as we know it? What would we do to life as we know it? Weibark is finding out from the heat he is getting what happens when you challenge the accepted system by trying to help someone that just might be in trouble.